Okay, here we are in the Xpeng G6, and I wanted to do a direct comparison with the Avatar Huawei system that we had in our Avatar 1.1 video. Fortunately, City NGP, which is part of Xpeng's XNGP, does not operate that far outside of Shanghai, whereas the Huawei system does. So already you can chalk one point up to the Huawei system there. It is more accessible than the Xpeng system. However, we've now set ourselves up a route that is inside the City NGP area of Shanghai, and we're gonna give it a go. By the way, if you haven't seen our Avatar Huawei video, you can check it in the top corner over there, or you can find it after the video. But right now, we're just gonna see what this system can do within the city NGP area. We've set up a location, it's 13 kilometers away, about 18 minutes away. Yeah, let's see how it goes. And we will set off. I'll just press this button on the steering wheel. And in a moment, I'll be able to activate city NGP. If I can get behind this car here, which I can't, so I will go around the back of it. Okay, so let's see if we have, so currently we can't get LCC, but I know this road does have city NGP. So as soon as we get around the corner, We'll put it into place. We've got a few seconds on our traffic lights. Let's put it on left there. Of course, you have to set up a destination, otherwise the system won't work. So let's just dive across here. And in a moment, we should have our city NGP. Let's give it a go. It was available on this road earlier. There we go. Okay, right now we have it activated. Here you can see NGP. Got the map set up on this screen here. You can click on here to go on the map or click on there to go onto the map of the road. So it's changing lanes there. You see across this solid white line, which is a little bit naughty, I believe. Now I will have to touch the steering wheel every now and then because you have to put some torque into it. Normally I would leave my hand down here. Now this system in a straight line for example, on a motorway, will prompt you quite a lot to make sure that it's that you're there, that you're doing something. Now the car wants to change lane down here. You can see it's just going there. It's indicating to the right side as this arrow shows. So it's now shifted us into the middle lane. As I was saying, this system does require throttle, uh, steering input on the on the system here on a straight line, which can be a little bit annoying. Now again, we've just changed lanes again, so it's getting a little bit fussy here. Just dived in front of a BMW, and now we're going across again because we're getting ready to turn left at the end. Now, I don't believe, although I'm not certain, don't believe that there's any highway roads in this. There may be some, in which case that's a bonus because we can show city NGP and highway NGP. But there you go, we're indicating left. We've got a green, white, left filter ahead of us, so we're going to turn left. See, that's prompting me to put a bit of torque into the steering wheel. Just leave my hand behind there. Don't want to block this screen for this camera, which is showing us what's going on. Nice gentle curve there. It's doing well on the left side, on the left turn. And it looks like, yes, we are going to go onto a highway, so that's a bonus. Now we've got to change lanes, and that BYD thankfully has gone to that lane. That's good. I'll put my hand back on the steering wheel. So my feet are off to the side here. I'm not doing any throttle inputs. Hand is on the steering wheel. Some of the other YouTubers that have driven this car found that the actual torque required to activate your hand sometimes disengages the system. I've not had that problem yet, which is good because maybe that means that it's been improved since they drove it. But as I said, in a straight line, you can't really put torque on the steering wheel and it will ask you to do so. So it can get a little bit fussy on that, which can be a bit of a challenge, but there you go. Automatic lane change to the left side again. It's worked out pretty well. It wants to go into the next lane. You can see here, it's gonna do that. And what I've found with this system is, it doesn't necessarily favor any of the lanes. So in the Lee Auto, when we drove that, it tended to prefer the fast lane or the middle lane. The Avatar actually drove across four lanes to get into the fast lane. This car actually seems comfortable in pretty much any. Obviously it will use that lane, the slow lane, a little bit less, but generally it will change lanes quite comfortably. At this point, as you can see, we have all four lanes available to us. 
and in 6.3 kilometers we will come off this highway not entirely sure if the ngp will operate the whole way if it will still be activated with a steering wheel prompt there if it will still be activated or still in the active zone when we get to the end of this highway but i guess we're just going to, have to find out now there's no heads-up display in this car what you do get is this 7.25 inch display here which again is prompting me to put torque on the steering wheel i want to try and put a bit more force on it i'm going to jam my arm up against the steering wheel here see if that makes any difference what i find is sometimes if you just kind of hang a bit of weight on one side maybe that works so you see it's actually picturing all the cars on the road it also shows when they indicate on the car as this very attractive stelvio is doing so now We've got a truck or in this case an mpv coming up on our left side and he's probably going to try and squeeze into that gap and yet the car has panicked a bit there because he did get a bit too close to us now the interesting thing about this xngp and the autonomous cruise control on this car is that it actually gives you a higher speed than the speed limit so currently this road as you can see on the signs there says 80 kilometers per hour per lane it indicates that here on our display but the cruise control it's given us is up to 88 kilometers per hour so it adds about 10 percent on top and if you're in a 30 zone or a 40 zone it tends to do about 37 or about 48 which suggests to me that Xpeng know that maybe it can get away with that. I don't know. But there you go. We've changed into the third lane now. We've decided a bit too much congestion going on over there. My challenge with these autonomous drive systems, and I've now tried the Xpeng, the Huawei, and I've even tried City uh, Leoto's City NOA, which is not yet available, but it's coming soon. My problem with them is that they don't anticipate enough so whereas a human will be looking in the mirrors checking around to see you know what speed other cars are doing if other people are driving erratically these systems don't tend to look at that they tend to react more to what is happening around them now the good thing about this car is it does sometimes spot a car in the distance and already decides okay it's a good time to leave early to change lane and get in and maintain momentum it'll do that sometimes not quite all the time sometimes it will get stuck behind a car and just wait there for a while when it could just undertake which apparently is legal in china but now at the moment it's handling this highway pretty decently everybody's behaving themselves around here which is great as you can see on you can't see it on this screen but you can see it here we're doing 88 kilometers per hour at the moment as i mentioned the speed limit is 80 It's just sped up a little bit now. Now it's doing 91, 90. Just having a little bit of a speed increase there. I'm curious why they allow that. But I seem quite happy in the third of four lanes here. And in 2.2 kilometers, we're gonna be pulling off to the right side. That might be the end of the highway. We've got a Mercedes-Benz GLA here, just on our right shoulder. At some point, the car's gonna to wanna to pull over and get itself in position to leave the highway so i'm curious how it's going to handle that mercedes sat on our shoulder if we're lucky the mercedes benz will speed up as it is doing now the xpon will probably have to slow down now we're overtaking the mercedes again this is going to be interesting because we've now got essentially three lanes to get across if we're going to get into an off-ramp lane on the right side Let's see how we do. Oh, I actually decided to go left. Okay, that's bold. With a kilometre left to go, we're giving ourselves more to do. Again, that anticipation thing. And actually, it wasn't necessary, really. We could have gone into the second lane. All right, now we're changing back again. We've navigated that Volkswagen. We're eyeing up the second lane. There's a wrong way on the inside. We've decided to go for it. He's going to get slowed down a bit. Personally, I hate getting in other people's way. So I always judge my overtakes or my undertakes or my lane changes based on not annoying other people these cars do tend to kind of just quite happily irritate other people if they're going faster than you are now we need that first lane and it's quite close with the byd behind us you can't quite see it there but it's gone for it anyway and here comes the highway exit 
little bit of an aggressive turn there, maybe a little bit stronger than we would have liked. Now, I did watch a video of this recently with He Xiaopong, the boss of Xpeng, trying out his own system on his route to work. And what I liked about it was that he was honest. He said, look, this system isn't perfect yet. Still learning, machine learning. And this system actually builds HD maps as it goes along, which is why, as I tried it earlier on a different highway, it hadn't recognized the new road. The HD maps are the backup, but the system, the LIDARs, the cameras, they're all constructing a new image based on what it's seeing on the road. And the HD maps are the background. So you can see here, it's visualizing all this highway. That is all from HD mapping. And the question is how it reacts when things have changed. We did try this on the P5 in Guangzhou. Honestly, wasn't that impressed on the P5, but that's got a lot less processing power than this car. This one has 508 tops, same as the Xpeng G9. The P5 only has 20 tops, so quite a lot less brain power to be dealing with all of that information that it's getting. So it's navigated that exit quite well. We are now off the highway, which is good. And we're onto a, I would call this more of an avenue, a wide road. And let's see what it does. We've still got, thankfully, quite a lot of traffic going on. So we are giving it a decent challenge here. And honestly, it's done quite a good job, apart from a couple of slightly sharp moves and a bit of prompting for the steering. It's done quite well. At this point, now we're going the first lane. We're going to pull in front of a van. It was going slightly quicker than we are. At least it's polite enough to indicate, so that's nice. And we're going to go to the right side here, which looks like we're coming off this road onto something else. Will we go into the right lane or will we stay behind the bus? It's looking like we'll stay behind the bus. So all the guys are going faster because, honestly, humans are significantly faster than these systems right now. These systems are not natural enough to justify their use for me personally. Some people like to use them. I personally, given that you have to have your hands on the steering wheel at all time and you take responsibility, they're actually not much of a benefit in my opinion. But it is quite impressive to see what they can do. Again, another steering input, input being prompted there. We have finally changed to go past the bus. And what you might see in a moment, we've got green traffic lights ahead. Will it show them on here? Because it does have vehicle to infrastructure. Or I think it's called vehicle to infrastructure. So we've got a green light here. There you go. You can see that it sees the green light. And that's quite good. It's made a diagonal movement there to be in the right lane on the other side of the junction. So it's done that very well. Slightly cautious. Again, the Xpeng boss said that their system favors safety over over everything so I think that is the key difference between things like XNGP and the Avatar 1.1's Huawei system they tend to be a bit more safe compared to Tesla's which is a little bit more aggressive now interestingly here we're only doing 50 on this road and it's showing us that we should be doing up to 60 so we are a little bit cautious on this road going quite slow thankfully a bit less traffic around here so less people to annoy now we've got a red traffic light ahead. You will, again, another steering wheel prompt. You can see I have to put a lot of steering wheel prompts in. I'm gonna leave my hand a bit heavier on this steering wheel just to see if we can reduce that number. Here's our traffic light system. It's detected that we've got a red traffic light. That's quite nice, actually. Look at that the little graphic on the picture shows that we have red traffic lights and it shows where they are as well on this side over here and the twin ones over there. And one of them has gone green, cool. Right, so we're going to make a kind of an S shape over to the right side in this lane. Let's see how we navigate that. Again, just leaving a bit of tension on the steering wheel. I'm not steering it myself. Just need to leave a bit of weight on it. A bit of casual motion across the junction here. We're going really slow with this one. See, it's very cautious. This Porsche behind me is going to get annoyed. I mean, he could go around me on the other lane there, but he's not doing so. See, it's really, really cautious in this turn here. Only doing 15 kilometers per hour. Okay, now we're going to speed up a little bit. So yeah, that was that was a little bit on the slow side. Not a perfect system yet, but they haven't claimed that it is. Apologies for the slowing you down there, Porsche. I hate doing that. But sometimes you have to when you're testing these systems. He's going off that way. We're not going to be a problem for him anymore. 
and he was being polite about it so no no flashing lights we're changing lane there automatically that's good put a bit of weight on the steering wheel again because we've got a slightly straight road here so we need to have some steering input so far this has been quite decent actually that was probably the worst part back there we've got two minutes to go 1.2 kilometers until we finish our trip and we're going to make a sharp right turn now not sure at what point City NGP will stop. We might hit the outside of the zone. Let's see. We're slowing right down for this corner. We are going to annoy this car behind us. I'm going to speed us up a little bit just with my foot there, just to not wind him up quite so much. Steering input is all the cars. There we go. All right, now can we just speed up a little bit faster, please, car? Because we need to turn left at the next light. Right, I'll take my foot off the accelerator again. So just prompting it to go a bit faster there. How are we going to navigate this S-bend in the road here? How are we doing? Better weight on the steering wheel. Oh, that was quite good. Now, if there was a car in the right-hand lane, it would have been a bit different and might have not been quite as easy. The car behind us is an IML7. Also looks like it's got a LiDAR. There we go. So it's telling us now in 150 meters our NGP is going to stop. And we're going to go into the left lane. And you can see now, take control. I would have appreciated if it hadn't been facing me at the wall at the point that it gave me the steering back, but at least I was ready for it. So there you go, that is the XNGP system. And I think that was quite decent, actually. As I said, the traffic conditions and the time of day, not exactly the same as they were for the Avatar 1.1 video. So not a direct comparison, I'm afraid I can't give you a direct comparison of that. But overall, very good system. And we're pretty much at our destination now. So what do you think? Do you think the Huawei system is better or the Xpeng system? Or do you think that Tesla's full self-driving is the best one? I mean, we haven't been able to try that in China yet. Maybe we'll get a chance in the future. Thanks for watching. If you subscribe, thank you for subscribing. And to everybody, all of our 10,000 plus followers that we now have, thank you so much for your support, for watching and checking in on us. We, well, we, I super appreciate it, really do. And yeah, it's amazing. Thank you so much and hope you enjoyed the video.